So the gate program. What is it? I have no idea. <laughs> but uh, someone brought it up again on uh, X. Um, the good X on 4chan, not the fucking Elon Musk thing. And um, I was in it as a, as a kid in the 70s. Um, I'm not sure exactly what age. I would say it was before 10. I noticed these uh, gate threads started on the boards about, I don't know, five years ago. Like around the COVID time, people start talking about it. You know, like, hey, we, do you guys, when you were in school, do you ever rem remember being uh, taken aside and brought into this weird sound booth thing where you had to wear headphones and drink some uh, like Pepto Bismo shit and the and the people like yeah and also this and also that uh, and then on the other night compiled this list here of things that all of us have in common that have memories of uh, of this particular program uh, why it's called gate I don't know I think I, I might have known but I don't remember anymore what's it or though really can only speculate I have theories um, I think what they were trying to do is catch certain people when they were young to try to suss out who uh, who met whatever requirements they were trying to have met um, or I, I think they were trying to figure out who's more likely to be able to figure out they're in an illusion, or they're uh, more, you know, uh, spiritually minded, or something like that, just by going by all the stuff that's involved. This list here has pretty much uh, all the stuff that we've compiled, we, that people have compiled over the years that people that have had these memories had in common and with me it's like I can clearly vividly remember parts of it and have zero memory of other parts of it and um, the, there was a drug that's been talked about that went along with this program that they would, would give you administer to you somehow and maybe that was in the the pink pepto bismol stuff but uh, what's it called scopamine Lopamine. I could be confusing that with, with the uh, Brazilian zombie drug, but it's something that, that makes your uh, your memory, it, it obscures your memory. So I think they were trying to erase that from, you know, our memories, those of us who were doing this thing. How, why, and I think I know why I got involved in this. And um, what happened was, when I was young, I was really good at art. I was good at drawing, creating things. I was in speech therapy, which is one of the things on the list there. Um, <clears throat> uh, one thing leads to another. You know, like, the reason I had speech therapy because I had, had a stutter. The stutter, I think, came from abuse I had beforehand and a near-death experience that I had when I was an infant. And <laughs> yeah, it's one thing. Everything leads into something else. But... Uh, so what happened uh, with me was I was, re how you doing? I was good at like uh, drawing stuff and actually uh, won something in my school. They were taking the kids out and they put them in front of the uh, schoolhouse. They had to draw the schoolhouse and I ended up uh, winning this thing. So I got in the newspaper and all this other stuff. And then I was entered into uh, something called the Young Artists of America. And the, put a book out whatever year, like a hardcover book. I'm getting mauled right now. I gotta move, get over here. Gotta give it a minute. <sighs> you know, I live in the city, what am I gonna do? Oh, where, where is, let me go this way. There's gotta be less people going this way. Cause I, it's just gonna be like this for the whole time. Sorry. Okay, let's cross the street then. I remember for the Young Artists of America book, I did a drawing 
of uh, from Lord of the Rings, Gandalf and, and Bilbo, that I pretty much just copied off the coloring book and it got in the book. It's pretty funny. But anyway, my art teacher, who was a guy named Mr. Taylor, uh, this is after the newspaper and went in the thing. Oh, that, that picture I did of the school, too, went to the superintendent of schools and hung in their office for a while. And then it came back into my, uh, into my mom's hands at some point. Oh, when the school that it was in closed down. Anyway, the, um, I remember my art teacher, Mr. Taylor, who was a... Uh, I remember him as a nice guy. He had a, one of those kooky handlebar mustaches that the hipsters have. He had one of those for real. And um, let me just keep walking here. I keep just ending up in a crowd of people. And at that point, I'm doing a show. You know, I don't want to do a show because nobody talks to each other. It's creepy. Let me see. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think, man, I picked a bad time to be. I'm just going to be trying to shake tails. And hold on. Anyway, um, he was he was cool. I liked him. I got along really well with him. And um, a lot of a lot of new uh, a lot of new residents. Yeah. The, um, he brought me down to his uh, office in the basement, but the library was in the basement too. Oh, I had a, <laughs> this is kind of, no, it sounds stupid to say it because you wouldn't even believe it, so I'm not even going to say it. He brought me down into the, uh, his office basement slash library place, and he, um, he took out one of my drawings that I had done more recently. It was the Snow Walkers from Star Wars. So, yeah, let me think about this. So it must have been 1980. If it was the Snow Walkers. I think it was the Snow Walkers. Yeah, so it's in like 1980, so I was like 9? 71? Yeah, I was like 9 years old. So anyway, he puts the picture down, and he's like, Can you do this with your own stuff? Like, things from your own mind. Not copying this. The uh, the schoolyard one I did of the building, uh, the reason the grown-ups are so impressed with it is because I did, like, every little fucking detail. From, like, the rust on the signs that were attached to the building to the piping uh, for the, uh, you know, rain guards and all this other shit. And, like a... I think it was like a gas line that went into the building. Um, so he, he was, he laid it down. He's like, can, could you do this with something like that you make up in your mind? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I could do that. And that's the only memory I have of that. So I don't know what happened after that. If they put a bag over my head and put me in a van. <laughs> I don't know. But I have that memory. My, a lot of my childhood is like that. And I think that has to do with the abuse shit. Because I have very vivid memories of moments. Um, and then can't recall anything. You know, I can't recall anything. And the gate situation was like that for me. Now, after that time, I remember the, the, the gate stuff was early. The... Uh, the weird abuse kind of stuff was early. Oh, I had, yeah, I had a near-death experience, too, when I was an infant. My, my mom um, had me wrapped up in a... Or at least I think I did. I don't remember. She had me wrapped up in a blanket, and I popped out the top. So she had me wrapped in a blanket. She was on the phone. It was stuck on the phone. She went to turn, and, like, it just popped me right out the top. I landed on my head. On my head. So, yeah, my mom dropped me on my head as a baby. My eyes rolled back into my head, and I wasn't making any noise. What did you say? I was out. She thought I was dead, you know. So she freaks out, calls my dad at work, you know. Um, this guy's fighting here. Something going on. I don't know. But anyway, the um, so she's freaking out. Dad comes home from work, and I guess at some point, I kind of. Uh, regained consciousness or, or came to again or something. Um, I don't remember their, them talking about a hospital at all. Uh, 
and I guess probably because, uh, you know, how do you take a, a baby to the hospital and explain that you dropped him on his head? You can't do that, you know? Um, got you on this girlfriend. <sighs> Better have an open casket at least, buddy. So, um, the, uh, I'm having trouble concentrating because I keep just walking into people. I'm going to have to, to, I'm going to cut that. I'm going to cut this off here until I get back into some area where I'm fucking a little bit more able to control my environment. All right. Yeah, there was just people coming from every direction back there. And I couldn't, like, uh, usually I'm pretty good. I get, I, like, I, you know, I've been doing this for years now. I can dart in and out of people and stuff. But I was trying to remember things and had a... Uh, Everybody walking from every direction. Plus, you know, my onboard security is going up every two seconds. A lot of these new people, these new residents that have come in here, I, I swear, this, when the CIA brings them over, they give them a gun. Because a lot of these crimes they're committing now are gun crimes. Someone got shot the other day, too, a young kid with a gun. And this fucking state is really gay about guns. Like, it's deep blue, you know? And the, you know, the gun control people. All these motherfuckers have guns, though. It's like, you just moved here a couple of years ago. Like, 2021 is when they first started coming in. Uh, a lot of them, you know. And um, did they issue them all their own pistol or what? Because like, it's fucked up. How do, you, how do you get in with someone? I mean, because you can get a gun, you know. And they're, they're gangs here and stuff. Uh, but they're islanders. I don't know if they would have dealt with them. I don't know. Who knows? I, I can't. I don't know what's going on in the underworld here. I don't really, you know, I don't really talk to anyone from there. I used to. I used to have friends. But uh, a lot of them had to go with the, uh, with the COVID thing. They got displaced. And um, they brought all, all new people in to move into their apartments. So anyway, yeah, th basically this whole gate thing. Uh, no one knows ultimately what it's for. They just have speculation theories. I know that um, for me, once I got to like sixth grade, like middle school, there was no more anything. Like um, no more abuse shit, no more uh, weird uh, gate type shit. Because um, I pretty much have, I remember everything from there on up, kind of. You know, from the age of like 11, I guess. 11, how old are you in 6th grade? 12? Maybe I was 12. Yeah, 12. Whatever the fuck it was. 1983. I remember it was 83 in 6th grade because Pyromania by Def Leppard came out. So, yeah, that's how I remember. I remember shit by fucking music and albums that came out in my ear. I really do. Like, that's how I can figure out years. A lot of times. But yeah, so what is it? I mean, ultimately, I don't know. Um, but whether it's like a, a situation where you're tagged somehow or you're followed or, you know, because I've had that the gang stalking type shit. And I was, you know, had to go into the nut hut for a while, the uh, mental hospital. Um, basically, I wasn't like freaking out or anything. It was just what I was, the stuff I was talking about. Um, and I went to have a psych eval because my sister was kind of worried about me. She's like, yeah, I was always talking about conspiracies and stuff. And, you know, the same stuff I talk about now. But, uh, when I went in and talked to psych eval lady, she was like, oh, okay. Um, hold on. Let's go talk to your sister. My sister's with me. And so I'm waiting for them. And, and she comes out and she goes, we're going to take you for some more tests. I'm like, all right, cool. I said, well, I got to stop by the house and grab some stuff first. She's like, no, no, you can, we'll have your stuff brought to you. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm there. I can't leave now. <laughs> and then some, uh, some dudes came in and strapped me to a, uh, like a, a stretcher. They, they belted me down for my safety. And off to the nut hut I went. And when I got in there, and I, I told all these I've told a lot of stories about the uh, 
the mental institution stage. And everybody else in there was the same kind of person I was. We're all talking about the same kind of stuff. You know, things that people would consider conspiratorial. All of us. All of us. In fact, the first time I went in, there was a lady in the, the room as I was in uh, being checked in. And they go, they take the laces out of all your stuff. And they, you know, whatever clothes you have, they, they put away the ones you can have and all this other stuff. She was screaming about Sirhan Sirhan. And she was tied down in her bed and just screaming, Sirhan, 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 Sirhan. And I'm like, Sirhan, Sirhan? I didn't understand what the whole deal was at that point. I thought, like, mental health problems were real. And like, I thought the doctors knew what they were talking about. It was all new to me. And I was like, that's weird. The, the Kennedy guy? It's kind of weird. And then when I start talking to everybody else in there, they're all the same. We all have the same type of thoughts about things. And what I think it is, is a gatekeeping situation. They're like, okay, these guys are going off script. So because they're going off script, we have to put them on script so that they get back on script. It's like if you, they're trying to keep people, the same thing with I think the gate program, that's why it's called gate, I believe. It's a gatekeeping program to keep people who might be drifting off or might be beginning to see the architecture, the invisible architecture or whatever, starting to get a clue of what's going on. They want to figure out who these people are, keep them back here in this matrix fucking 3D area, and also keep track of them so they know who they are. Um, Because, yeah, I mean, although I haven't had any gate stuff or abuse kind of stuff, a lot of weird stuff has happened, like in the, like the gang stalking type of stuff and things like that. Um, you know, the regular schizo stuff. Uh, so, yeah, the, um, when I went in, actually, the first, I told the story so many times, I'm sorry to the guys that are here all the time, but, you know, just in case someone new pops in, I was diagnosed with schizophrenia in 2008, which I wasn't, I don't really think is what my thing was. Uh, in 2012, I was diagnosed with disassociative identity disorder, which I think is really more the problem because uh, there's a lot of memory loss. And while I still kind of struggle with it now, it's not nearly as bad as it was uh, before I moved here. When I moved here, I feel like um, a lot of the symptoms went away, and I think a lot of that has to do with the environment. You know, losing a lot of maybe the triggers that, that would set me off and when I say set off, I was going crazy. It's the stuff that was happening in me. Um, but those are other stories for other days. Uh, I'm going to go in right now because I know there's just going to be more and more people going to show up around me. You know how it goes with me. But uh, yeah, thanks for dropping in. Uh, I'll do some more stuff about gate because I'm going to be reading some more, try to find some more information about it. Um, if anyone that sees this has had any gate type stuff you know feel free to let me know I'd love to be able to get some more information on it and try to get a little farther because all we have now uh, is the things that we have in common uh, things that we're experienced uh, in common and um, there's a lot more to it I'm sure I just don't you know this, this is you are here as of right now you know but thanks for popping in. As always, don't blame the teacher, blame the school. Oh, we just see a dog. Oh, there they are, yeah. Hey, guys. How are you doing, buddies? 